the distinguished lady from California, Ms. Lofgren. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll be brief because I want to make sure that my colleague, uh, Ms. Jackson Lee, also has an opportunity to uh, participate. You know, as I have listened to some of these proposals, it seems to me kind of um, interesting that people seem to have forgotten our experience with SOPA uh, just a year ago. I don't think, and I mean, if someone feels differently, please speak up, that the American public's attitude towards SOPA has done a U-turn in the year, you know, that's happened since then, and the idea of the, uh, the performance uh, make available proposal really just goes in the same direction we were going there. That's a non-starter in my opinion. I certainly value getting viewpoints and, and academic discussion, but it's not going to happen. Um, I think one of the things that, that has been raised that, that we should review is the issue of statutory uh, damages. And when you take a look at some of the really outrageous things that have happened with statutory damages, I think of the case of the single mother, the RIAA brought a case uh, where a jury awarded $1.5 million uh, against this woman for downloading 24 songs with no indication that she had ever even shared them, as a matter of fact. Now, that was reduced to uh, 54000 because of the uh, disproportionate nature of the statutory by the judge. But that you have that kind of statutory scheme is irrational, it's, it's, and it needs to be changed. And I think back also, uh, I, the orphan works discussion, you know, I spent a long time trying to work on that and finally gave up along with the other members of the committee because of the intransigence of some of the participants. But I think one of the things we ought to take a look at, you know, is what the damage that we did by extending the term, the copyright term. We now have a copyright term that basically is a century and a half. Uh, and we've aggravated uh, the issue of orphan works by doing so. Unfortunately, you know, you wish you could go back in time and undo some votes. And that's one I was convinced as a, a, I think I was a freshman, that the, the WIPO treaty required that vote, and I now know that that was not the case. Uh, I wish I could undo my yes vote on the uh, Sonny Bono Copyright Extension Act. Uh, finally, I think the real value of this hearing is the issue raised about uh, standard standards and public law. I was going to ask unanimous consent to put into the record the standard test methods for lead and water. I don't need to do that because my colleague, um, Mr. Isa, has already done so. But it seems to me very clear that you cannot have secret law. If you're going to require people to adhere to a standard, that has to be in the public domain. And I un I'm sympathetic. I understand uh, you know, there's a business model set up. But you can't allow the business model to trump the rule of law. And uh, you know, I'm mindful of the um, discussion that we had about um, publicly funded research. And we had, a, we had a hearing here a couple of years ago, and the, the uh, nonprofit societies are basically funded by the, um, for their peer review process, which is essential, um, by the publisher. And yet, and that's a business model that actually was deleterious to the public's right to have publicly funded research made available publicly. We've now changed that, and I think over time, the way we fund uh, nonprofit science societies is going to have to follow along and change as well, because they do provide a, a useful model. But you can't allow that current business model to dictate the end result, which is if you incorporate by reference a document, that has to be part of the public record. And, the, and if there's a fee, for example, I mean, that assumes that the public doesn't have an interest. If I'm a, a contractor, you know, maybe I can afford to pay the fee um, because I, I'm going to make money after, you know, on that. But there's a public interest in this. It's not just the people in the business. It's, it's the public's right to know. Uh, is this a sufficient standard? Well, the only way you're going to find out is to have free access to it. And uh, 
to, to put up a screen to that if it's part of the law is completely wholly inappropriate. I uh, agree with Mr. Issa that uh, there's no uh, copyright reform that we should support that doesn't uh, resolve this issue. And I, uh, I've listened with great interest, as I say, I think, although there's academic uh, interest in this, uh, certainly the public spoke very loudly about SOPA, and I don't believe that we are going to uh, have the uh, appetite to revisit that, either in our copyright laws or, frankly, in the TPP negotiations that are underway. You're right, we don't know what they're negotiating, but the leaks to WikiLeaks are SOPA. And if, if, if SOPA is in TPP, it's dead, in my judgment. With that, I see my time has expired, and I yield back.